All right, I got some more coffee in me. Let's continue. Um, I said I was going to do the cruise condition in this video, um, but I think what I'll do, if we have a desired climb angle, then let's uh, let's quickly show how to plot that. So if we go back to our notes, um, there's this nice figure, this diagram just explains the relationship between climb angle um, and uh, different air speeds. So our climb angle symbol uh, convention here is to use the symbol gamma. Our airspeed is uh, in the direction the aircraft is actually flying. So that's V sub infinity, that's our true airspeed. We have a horizontal airspeed, so that's the component of our true airspeed that's in the horizontal direction, and our vertical airspeed. So our vertical airspeed, VB, that's our rate of climb, ROC. So if we have a climb angle requirement with one engine out, uh, as an example, at sea level and takeoff condition, how can we actually calculate that? So um, let's say um, we have, uh, how should we plot this? Let's go back to our equation and see what we need. So our thrust to weight um, for climb condition, where is our relationship? Um, follows this relationship here. So if we know our max left to drag ratio, um, then that's where we want to fly such that we have our um, maximum climb angle. So our maximum climb angle is basically flying at our um, L over D max. So uh, much simpler to plot. All we need is actual climb angle. We have that, uh, I believe, in our requirements. If not, we can just add it down here. So let's put climb angle. Um, and it's going to be sea level conditions. So I'm going to do thrust to weight ratio, sea level conditions. Um, do I have a climb angle requirement up here? Climb angle. So yeah, if you, uh, for whatever applicable regulation, um, I haven't double checked if this is correct, but for gamma, let's just say it's 2.5 degrees. Um, so we got to convert this to radians in Excel. So don't forget to do that, otherwise you get a, a different answer. So our thrust to weight ratio is just going to be equal to the sine. If we have an angle in degrees, I can type in the function radians and it converts our angle to our radians. So I'm going to put in our degrees, two and a half. sine of the angle plus um, our max L over D. So our maximum lift to drag ratio for the simplified drag model is equal to the square root of four times our, our uh, induced drag coefficient times our minimum drag. I've already calculated that um, for our max L over D with this relationship right up here. So I'm just going to click that and that would be our thrust to weight ratio um, at sea level oh, divided by that one divided by there we go thrust to weight ratio of 15 would be some kind of super quadcopter drone um, which is not what we have obviously so i'm going to change these values just add dollar signs so that they don't change um, and you see you know, we could have predicted this. There's no wing loading dependency here, so the value is just constant. So this is going to show up in our plot as a horizontal line. Um, one value of thrust to weight ratio, um, and it's independent of our wing loading. So we can add that the same way we would for um, our stall condition. So I'm going to put this as climb gradient requirement. Um, just as a side note, the sine of the angle, um, or sorry, the tangent of the angle, our climb angle is our gradient. So it's your rise over your run. So for our x values now, we have um, our wing loading, but um, we just need two points. So instead of doing it this method, oh, hit escape, shouldn't have hit escape. 
so I'm going to put in our climb, climb gradient, our x values equal zero, and then the maximum value we should want our plot is 100, so I'll make it go to 100. Use the correct bracket, and then our y values, I'm just going to select the first two values up here. And so we have our climb gradient now, and again, all engines operating. I'm going to have it here. So we know that this is our climb gradient and we see this line appear, this horizontal line, that's our climb gradient line down here. So again, it's, we know it's 0.1, it's below any of these values. So it's not driving our uh, minimum thrust to weight ratio for our aircraft. So let's say we want to implement our climb gradient requirement and we have one engine out. Um, let's assume that our, our aircraft has two engines. So if one engine is out, that means that the remaining engine thrust must be able to maintain that 2.5 uh, degree climb angle. So in here, I'm just going to write all engines operating. I'm going to copy this over and I have climb gradient now with one engine inoperable, OEI. So in this case, if we have the same requirements, we think about the total thrust that two engines generates um, would be um, you know, required to generate 0.1 thrust to weight ratio. Let's say our aircraft weighs uh, 10,000 pounds. So 0.1 of that is 1,000 pounds. So we have two engines that have to generate 1,000 pounds of thrust. If one engine goes out to maintain that same climb gradient, we now have one engine, and that one engine needs to maintain 1,000 pounds of thrust. So we need to multiply the thrust to weight ratio with all of our engines operating by the ratio of our total number of engines divided by the number of engines that are out. So in this case, we're taking our thrust to weight ratio and we're gonna multiply it by two engines when they're all operating divided by only one engine when one of them are out. We have three engines, we multiply this by three divided by two four engines multiply by four and divide by three. So number of engines that we have divided by number of engines that are operating when one of them is out. So the more engines you have, the less stringent this one engine out requirement becomes because you're losing a smaller fraction of your total thrust when one of the engines is lost. So let's say we have a two engine aircraft. Um, so our thrust rate ratio doubles uh, essentially now. You see a lot of decimal places here. These aren't showing a lot of decimals. Um, but if we add a few more, we can see this is, you know, properly not 0.1. We copy these down. Now let's include this. This might be a better indicator of our actual climb angle or climb gradient requirement. So I'll add climb gradient one engine inoperable. Our x values, again, 0, 100, and our y values, I'm just gonna select the first two points. And when we plot this, we can see this line is now double. So if we have a two engine aircraft and one engine is out, then uh, our minimum thrust requirement to maintain two and a half degree climb uh, angle is over 0.2 now. So maybe we wanna look at three engines for our aircraft find a way to have three engines installed. So now we're multiplying by one and a half instead of multiplying by two, and that reduces our requirement significantly. So now it falls just um, around that optimal point that we've been looking at so far. So maybe our aircraft, we want to consider having three engines so that we can meet this climb gradient requirement um, without having to increase our thrust to weight ratio and have this be the single requirement that's driving everything else. Um, who knows, maybe other parameters will move up and we have more realistic values. Um, but just a way of thinking about how many engines you might want in your aircraft, uh, just based on the regulation one engine out requirement.